am Rebecca from Cabinets, and here on my stove I have two four inch deep full size catering steam pans, but one has eight cups of water, one has 24 cups of water. And we're gonna do some immersion speckles on yarn using different water volumes to show how our water volume may or may not make a difference on our finished colorway. Now before we add the yarn and start heating things up, I wanna add some acid. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar to the eight cups of water and six tablespoons of white vinegar to the 24 cups of water. This gives the same ratio of our acetic acid to water, so the pH in the two pans is the same. One of the other variables that will be the same will be the yarn. Here I have 100 grams. Oh, and this one has a little bit of plant matter in it. I will pluck that out. Uh, we have added 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn to each of our dye baths. And when things are warm, we'll work to spread things out more again. But I think you can clearly see we're very much floating in our 24 cups. And eight cups for 100 grams isn't low immersion really by any stretch. Uh, but it is, the water volume may decrease as we heat things up. And so, yeah, it's possible we'll want to redo this when I might start with like four cups of water, but the volumes here are quite different, but the water, the yarn is still in a lot of water in both cases. All right, I'm going to turn on the heat and we're going to heat things up. And in the meantime, I'm going to go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves so we can get ready to bring over some dry dye powder. And... Looking at the yarn, we may not have dramatic differences to make our conclusions with, but if we don't have dramatic differences, then that tells us something also. So I will see you in a moment with our dye. Oh, and I'm going to have another skein of stroll just off camera to use as a yarn mop. I'm going to add, I'm just sprinkling on some vinegar right now onto this yarn, and I'm going to sort of move that through by squeezing it. As I'm speckling, I will end up with getting some dye on my gloves, and so then I will be wiping that onto here. Uh, if you want to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I'm using in my video, I will have links and affiliate links down in the video description. Stroll is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. We may end up pulling in a few other colors, but we're going to start with Dharma Acid Dye's Tangelo. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in to the 24 cup dye bath for our first little speckles. And I'm really just going to, maybe I'll do some over here as well. I'm only going in the middle of the yarn for now. We'll speckle more all over in a little bit. But see how the colors have spread so much? Even in just that short period of time. We have speckles, but also a ton of spread around them. Let's zoom in on this pan. Okay, and I can't promise that I'm going to be using the exact same amount. In fact, I dropped a very large clump over there. But I'm trying to behave a little bit similarly. Now, we're also seeing some spread in here. But for now, at least, it feels like a lot of the spread is really staying closer to where I place the dyes, whereas it feels like it's spread out a little bit more over on our deeper pan. But with this difference, and this is a difference that made a lot of, a huge difference when we poured liquid dyes on yarn, it's not making as big of a deal at this point. Let's go ahead and speckle on the rest of the yarn, and then maybe we'll bring in another color. Now here, there are definitely some areas where I can see the dyes hit water first and immediately go and spread. And so it's possible that we're going to have fewer speckles on the yarn itself because of that. Like it might make the colorway softer overall. Whereas over here, there are definitely some areas where the dye is above the dye. The yarn is at the surface. And so I'm seeing more spots where, as I'm taking the pitch of dye and letting it fall, I'm seeing more areas where the dye is hitting the yarn first. 
And again, we may have a fair amount of spread, but it's slower than what we're seeing on the more water pan. I would say this pan is looking distinctively peach all over. This pan, there's a little bit more white left. Uh, not entirely, we've got one area that's dark, but there's a little bit more contrast going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and let everything heat. Let's go ahead and wait 15 minutes and we'll pop back in. And as we wait, I have some thought notes for future Rebecca. I think that in the future, if I were to repeat this, I could do 200 grams of yarn in a pan where that would make the eight versus 24 cups. Uh, it would make that a little more manageable. It would make this a little bit less of a full immersion. It would make it a much lower immersion situation because we just have more yarn in there. But another thing I could do is just reduce the volume. And I think that when I revisit this, because I want to do this again, I would also use multiple different colors, but I'm really enjoying the Tangello effects we're getting here. And so I'm going to stick with that. Who knows if we'll add more dye or if when I flip, I'll decide not to. I haven't decided. The reason why, I know I said I'd be back, but the reason why I'm considering not flipping the yarn to add more dye is that if I were to flip the yarn and add more color, we'd end up with more spread. And so the white areas that we have in here may not remain, which normally is something I'm completely fine about. But the difference between the two pans would be diminished if we do that. I hope that makes sense. Because if we end up with more spread, some of these pale patches are gonna look less white, and we're gonna see more of that spread that we see here. We'll flip the yarn and then decide from there what we're gonna do. But it's funny because right now, it's looking to me like I added a ton more dye with our speckles here, and I don't think we did that. I think that it's because the dye is more concentrated in those areas, making it look like there's more, and the dye spread and softened a lot more here, giving us fewer speckles. Just my opinion. Okay, it has been 15 minutes and we're gonna flip just to see what we think about our coverage. And so on the reverse side here, I would say we have a large area with no speckles, but that's also okay. I've learned that uh, it's really hard to make something asymmetric with Knit Picks yarn. Okay, let's flip this yarn, all right. Because we're able to spread it out so much, I don't feel a need to add more color on the other side. I think that it's good, but I think that in flipping it, you can see that some of those areas that were more pigmented went through, and when the color went through here, because there's more water, it spread. So that's giving us some of our differences that we see. Now, most of the color has struck to the yarn, but we're gonna wait 15 more minutes to finish setting the color. Ooh, let's turn off the heat. We are very steamy. Oh, and we can turn on the light. <laughs> oh, it's funny, because sometimes with a lot of water, some colors can bleed. And by that, I mean that they can sort of detach from the yarn a little bit, spread out a little bit, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. It's just sometimes then if you can have a moment where you have something that still feels white in your yarn and then that can disappear. All right, uh, and that's even after heat setting, but I think that we're pretty good here. There's a hint of some white in this more subtle peach speckled colorway. I'm glad I ended up sticking with one color because it's a little bit less about the color blend, but I'll show you those two yarns in a moment. For now, I wanna bring over our yarn mop, which was not heat set. So if we see these colors spreading out a bit, that's not because of like, back staining or something that is just legitimately because the colors had not been set yet. <laughs> and so the dye is dissolving and spreading out into the yarn. 
But I'm gonna turn the heat back on here. We'll keep this for 30 minutes. Wash the skein off camera. But now let's check out our other yarns. The yarn is still warm, but you can see a difference in here between them. With more water, there's more opportunity for the dyes to spread. Now, if you have more yarn and more water, it's all about that ratio. The more the yarn is sort of free floating, the more opportunity there is for spread. But you can get spread with even a little amount of water. So those differences are pretty subtle and ultimately depends on the colors that you're using and the effects that you want. But anyway, I'm gonna let this finish cooling so we can wash it. The 30 minutes are up, but I figured it was worth showing the beautiful spread that we got on here. But again, that's just because we hadn't set the color. I don't know if this is a color that would bleed if I had steam set it first. But I'll wash it off camera. Okay, our yarn has cooled off and I'm about to start washing it, but I have a little helper here and I'm curious. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you, helper. Do you think that these look the same or do they look different? Well, so that's the more color. Like it's the more pink, that one's more red with white. Aha! So you can see a difference? Um yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> What's so good about that? Well, it was part of the point of the video. Ah. Actually, uh, w these actually do have a label where A would be, I guess, our low volume, B would be the high volume. But I was just thinking how I hadn't labeled the yarn and so I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But you can tell the difference. I can tell the difference, absolutely. Okay, I'm also bringing over the yarn mop. That? That looks almost the same. Yeah, yeah, Th these were all dyed with the same color dye writer. Uh, um, but the, one's the more pink, one's more red, well, the one's more orange. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just the, the technique was a little bit different. Um, and so that's why I'm happy that you could see the difference. But sometimes there's no color bleeding. I use this so sometimes you may see a big difference or not see a difference while the yarn is wet. And then once the yarn is finally dry, then you might notice a difference at that point. Yeah. So that is something that is always worth considering. But anyway, I'm very happy there's no bleeding. Uh, the Tangello looks stunning. I don't think it strikes nearly as fast as Peach Blush, even though the colors are similar. But anyway, I'm gonna put this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Thank you, Ryder, for participating. You're welcome. <laughs> it's been a, a couple of weeks since I've dyed the yarn, but it's still very obvious to me which speckles I dyed in a lower immersion or higher immersion setting. I'd still like to redo this at some point in the future to maybe make things a little bit more dramatic, but you get more spread when you have more water because sometimes those speckles you're adding come into contact with the water first and then it dissolves and then sort of spreads over a larger area. And sometimes the speckles do come in contact with the yarn first and then you see a visible speckle. So we do have speckles in a lot of pastel areas in our higher volume. Just like in our lower volume, we still have some areas that are peach, uh, <laughs> that is still there. There is still some spread that we got here. I probably could have reduced that water level even further, but we do have a difference here. And I think sometimes it's really important to be able to see little differences like that. Now, our yarn mop really has no speckles at all. We have some really nice splotches of the color and fine, maybe there are some things that would show up as a little speckle, but I'm really glad that we did submerge it to let those colors spread a bit because I think it makes this yarn fun. It's like cream and peach within some pops of color. So it could have a speckly effect once it's knit up, but it wasn't specifically dyed with speckles. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> They're all so pretty. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that this video helped illustrate the difference that having a larger volume versus smaller volume of water in your dye bath can make on your speckled yarn. Now, do I think I can devise this again in a way that could make results that are even more dramatic? Yes. <laughs> I think that I can increase the drama 
that we see on the yarn. But I'm really happy to show that sometimes differences can be a little bit more subtle. And had I flipped and dyed the yarn more and more, our lower immersion yarn over on the left would get more of a background color because the little bit of spread that we were getting to start with would be amplified as I layered more and more dye on. So that's just something that's worth keeping in mind a little bit. As the holiday season approaches, you can treat yourself with some mystery Chemnitz yarn. You can pre-order the 2024 Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn sampler. These samplers will ship in mid-November, so you get them in time for Hanukkah, which starts on December 25th. Each night of Hanukkah, there will be a new yarn dyeing video with a corresponding wrapped package in your sampler so you can unwrap a mini skein that was dyed in that night's video. It's a fun way to get your hands on eight different types of colorways dyed with different techniques and to really answer that question, I wonder how that might knit up. There are also some bonus full skeins that you can add on to your samplers if you want. You can find more information over in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. But anyway, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. I post at least twice a week and I do all kinds of things between creating fun colorways, doing experiments, and sometimes I even try things that are fairly silly. Then <laughs> you don't want to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching.